Okay, uh, so this week uh, we will try to uh, create a, a classification model and also a regression model by using the k nearest neighbors model. Uh, so first, let's download the data from GitHub. Um, so I have already downloaded to my um, downloads folder. And next, let's create a new folder in our repository. So I call it lab six. So this is for KN. Uh, and next, let's import the data. So we're going to use the same data from last week. So, so go to my downloads folder and I'm going to import the house price label Excel file. Okay, and everything looks great. Great, there are no problems. And I'm going to save that one to my uh, lab five folder so that import your data. Okay, uh, so here we can see the data is imported. So. Uh, for the classification model, uh, we are going to use uh, uh, the, the, the house that has been built and also the price to predict the house type. So that is for the classification model. And for the regression model, we are going to use the area. So the area to predict the house price. Okay, so that is for the regression model. All right, let's go to the design view and let's drag our house price. And first we need to select the attribute. So here I'm going to select from the recommended operators. Uh, so let's build the regret, uh, classification first. So let's select uh, the house type, which is a predict label, and the, the house being built, and also the price of the house. Okay. And next, let's set the rules. So in this case, uh, the house type will be the label. Okay. And let's see how the data look like. So now we can see the house type is now the label. And also, yeah, the house being built and also the price are there. So if you remember that uh, in the past, we do a split test. So we use a split operator. Okay, and then here you can see, uh, you can set the ratio, and also you can choose a different type of the um, sampling. So we have the shuffled, and also we have the stratified. Okay, uh, so for this class, for this lab, we are not going, we are not going to manually split. So instead, we are going to use this split validation operator. Okay. So we connect the data to this uh, training set, to this validation operator. And next, if we double click this one, so you can see we can go to inside this operator. So inside of this operator, we can see there are two windows on the left that is for the training, on the right that is for the testing. Okay, so split validation operator is, a, is an operator that can better organize the split test. You can still do the split test as we did manually uh, in the, our previous lab. But however, uh, you can also use this split validation operator so that it's easier for us to, to manage those operators. So within this split validation operator, so let's first bring our model, so that is KN. So if we search KN, it is here. Let's drag the model here and uh, let's connect the training data. Uh, so now we have our model. Okay. We also want to apply the model on the training data itself. So let's up, drag the apply model. And we feed the extract data to the as unlabeled for this apply model. And next we're going to do the performance. So if we type performance. And remember that for this performance, we're going to use the performance for regression. Okay. So the label to that and also the performance. For the performance, let's check kappa and also accuracy as well. And uh, and also let's change this one so that that performance of training. Okay. And then let's pass that result. So you can see that you cannot uh, connect this one to uh, the output file here. That is because you can connect this one like this one. Okay, so through this, 
And next, we are going to pass that one to the final result. Okay, to the so we pass an extractor through, and now we use through to, to that to that final operator. Okay, and if we go up, we can see here we have this one result, and we can pass that one. Okay, so that for the training data, and let's go ahead and go to inside, and now let's do that for the testing data. So first. Let's copy this apply model and also testing to this testing window. And let's change the name for this one. So this is uh, for the testing, performance of the testing. OK. And let's pass the model. So you can see model is here. Like we pass that model. And we put that model to the model. And this operator also provides the testing data. So let's uh, connect the testing data as unlabeled. And let's pass the performance to this performance as well. OK. Um, and next, we need to tell the validation parameters. OK, so how do you want to split the data? So here, you can say relative or absolute. And we can choose relative and the split ratio. So by default, um, this is the ratio for the training. OK, so this ratio is for the training. So if you use 70% uh, uh, for the training and also 30% well for the testing. OK. And here we can use uh, a sampling tab. Let's use stratified because this is a classification. OK, so let's use stratified. And let's use a local random seed uh, so that uh, because we want to see that the effect of different keys, so let's use the local random seed. So right now, okay, for the key nearest, we are using the five keys, and we can also vote it, a weighted vote, so that means that the distance will be considered. Okay, the so distance will be considered. And the mirror types, uh, let's choose the numeric mirrors, OK? Because also our data are numeric. And here you can see you can choose different types of mirrors to mirror distance. OK, so let's choose the default one. So that is Euclidean distance mirrors. And let's go to the top. So now we have two uh, average. So the second average, OK. So first, it winds for training and also winds for testing. OK. Oh, uh, I think I had error here. So because we should connect performance. OK, now it looks right. OK. So first, we bring the data and we have the model. And we apply model for the uh, uh, calculated performance on the training data. And we pass the performance to the output by using this through operator. We also pass a model uh, from the training uh, section to the testing section so that the model will do apply the model on the test set. OK, and then we pass the output, uh, the performance uh, outside of these operators. And if we go to the operator, we can see here we have two results. OK. And look, actually looks like right. Now let's write. So now we have the performance of the, let's look at the training. So the training, the accuracy is pretty high. And the kappa is 0.5. That is not bad. And if you look at the testing, we can see FPS is also very high, but the kappa is much lower. OK, the kappa is much lower. So that means we have an overfit issue. OK, uh, so now let's go back to our model. So if we uh, want to see the model look like, we can also do that. So that is the model KN neighbors, OK, five Ks, five nearest neighbors. OK, and with two dimensions. OK, so that is basically our model. 
Okay, uh, so now let's see we, how about we change the keys. So let's go to the validation. Let's see here we're using five neighbors. What if we are using, let's say, 10 neighbors? So how will that look like? So now we run the model. And I didn't check the performance. Okay, now let's run the model. And now we can see that the performance on training has dropped. The kappa is much lower. And performance on testing, the kappa is also lower. But you can see the difference between the training and also between the testing are smaller. Okay. Uh, if we increase the K, so let's say if you choose let's 50, and what will happen? Now we can see that kappa is zero for both training and also for testing. And that is because we can see that all the houses are predicted as single family home. Okay, even they are condo, townhouse, or land or lot, they are all predicted as single family home. So that's why the kappa is zero on the training and also on testing. So uh, that is when we have a very, very high k nearest neighbor analysis. Uh, have a very, very high case. Okay, uh, so that is for classification. And let's try to do a regression. So uh, let's delete those two, uh, a plan model and also a train model, and, but we are still keep the, the key nearest within the split test. And in this select attribute, so we are not use, we are not going to use uh, the type and also year that has been built. Instead, we're going to use the area and also price. So we're going to do a regression model. And here for this regression model, uh, the price will be the label. Okay, the price will be the label. And, and here, let's say split ratio is, is still 0.7 and also it is regression model. So let's use the shuffle sampling. Let's still use a local random seed so that we can compare different keys. And next, let's go back to the validation. So here we can apply the model. So we are doing the same thing. But for the classification performance, we're going to use a regression. Okay, because now it is a regression model. Okay, so we pass a label and we pass a model for the testing. And for the performance, we're going to use a squared correlation and we pass regression to the output. Okay. Um, and the next, let's say this is the performance for the training. And let's copy and paste those two here to the testing. So let's pass model to the model. Let's fade the test to this apply model. And let's report the performance. All right. And for the k nearest, let's say still we use five nearest neighbors. And the distance will still be the same. So numeric, that, that's fine. And let's go up. OK. And it looks like everything is great. And uh, let's still see how the um, model looks like. So let's run it. So here we are weighted five nearest neighbors for the regression uh, with one dimension. That is right because we are only calculating the, um, the price based on area. Uh, looks like I only have the performance for the training so that here you can see R squared is 0 0.6. I must uh, miss the testing. So let me double check. Okay, uh, so that is this one actually. That is for the testing. Okay, we pass through here and here. And okay. So now you can see for the training, R squared is 0.6. Uh, for the, and for the testing, oops, sorry. Uh, so this is for the testing. 
sorry, I'm, I'm confusing myself. Uh, hopefully, you are not you will not be confused again. So, in this split test validation, p means applies the model. We have the performance for training. We pass the the result of training go to this through operator and also pass that out. And also we have the performance for the testing and also we receive the model from the training mo model section. And also the test is from the split test operator. And we pass the final result uh, to the outside for the testing. Let me run it last time. Okay, so now we can see the R square for the testing is 0.6. And R square for the training is also 0.6. So actually, the R square for the testing is also higher. That is very, very interesting. OK. Uh, so now let's say we let's reduce the p since R square is high. So let's say we, we try to use two keys and how that will look like. OK, so we are using two nearest neighbors. Uh, R square for testing is 0.4 and R square for training is 0.9. Okay, so that is exactly what we expected. So with lower case, uh, the performance on training is much higher than the performance on the testing. Okay, so that you can see with lower case, the performance on training is much higher on the testing. All right. So that is P-mean for regression model, or for regression and also for classification. And here we have another question is that, so when we do the predictions, we only use area to predict price. So now my question is that, can I also use house type as a second independent variable to predict price in the PN? And the answer is yes, okay? So now, Go to the KN. So we can see here we have a warning um, that cannot handle the polynomial attribute. That is because we have the polynomial attribute, but when we mirror the distances, we are still mirror distance based on numeric mirrors. So if we click to this drop down list, we can see we can mirror the, uh, the distance for the nominal. Okay. Uh, but here still cannot resolve our problem because we have nominal data and also numeric data. So in this case, the best option is called mixed mirrors. Okay, and if you look at the help, you can see that mixed mirrors are able to calculate distance in case of both nominal and the numeric attributes. Okay, so that is that's pretty cool. And here, let's say we let's see still keeps so a key as five. And if you expand this one, uh, so you can see that for most users, they should key between zero and nine. Okay, for most users, they should key between zero and nine. So let's choose five. Five seems to be same seems to be a good result. Okay, and now if we run it. Okay, we use a k news for regression because still we are going to predict price. And now you can see the performance on testing is 0.6 and the performance on the training is also 0.6. Uh, so there's no big difference, but um, we, can, we can tell that for KN, we can use categorical data and also numeric data uh, together as independent variables.